Hello, hello, my lovely, lovely audience. Anyway, welcome to another video. So I'm gonna need something from y'all. Just real. Give me suggestions to do a what if around this. Like, I I don't know what to do here with this picture, but I've been wanting to for like so long. I've been wanting to do a what if based around this. So tell me, you know. Give me an idea of what I can do here. You know, what I can do. Anyway, uh, let's get into the video. The what if starts when Deku... On Deku's fourth birthday. He is basically dragging his parents. It's like seven in the morning. And he's basically just dragging them out of the house... Whilst well, they're still, like, drinking morning coffee, and still have a bit of a head... Well, they're still very tired, practically half asleep. And he's practically dragging them out of the house, excited to see what his quirk is. But as soon as he... he but as soon as his hand touches the light of the sun directly, it begins to burn, and within seconds... It's reduced to nothing but charcoal. Deku would stumble back, sma slamming his hand on the floor as he falls over, breaking it on the ground. His parents would quickly begin to wrap him up in different things from the house, such as blankets, a raincoat, so on, and they would take him to the quark doctor to see what the fuck is going on. So, as the car is, well, driving, uh, they are not even halfway either, and, like, it, the Quark Doctor's a five-minute drive from where they are to where, well, the Quark Doctor is, but they're not even halfway there. Oh, neat. When Deku's hand is almost fully regrown, him only missing half of his three mitt of the three fingers in the middle of his hand. He's only missing half of them after like two minutes. When they reach the Quark Doctor, Deku's oh neat. Deku's hand would have, have fully grown back. And they would learn of Deku's quirk. His quirk basically makes him a vampire from different iterations and well stories. For example, like the original vampires, Deku cannot enter a house uninvited. Now, this rule tends to be thrown around, but the gist of, is, gist of it is, and it's actually how they end up catching Dracula, is they... is that vampires can only enter a house if they've been invited inside one time. Only once. And as soon as they're invited in once, they can go in there for basically whenever. But otherwise, they are unable to so much as even step inside of the house. Now you're probably asking, can't Deku just break a hole through the wall? No, because first of all, his quirk will stop working if he tries to punch a hole in the wall. And if he tries to go through the front front door, he'll basically cartoon-style run into a glass pane. Except there's actually nothing there, he just can't enter. He is physically incapable of it. It's like a mime. <laughs> he just runs up there and it, it's the cartoon effect. Another thing of his quirk is that it's actually infectious. Now there are three methods he can infect people, all taken from different forms of, well, literature. It's that the first method is Deku fully drains the victim of all their blood, resulting in them becoming basically a weaker vampire. They have all the same abilities of Deku except toned down. The second is him giving, well, them some of his blood, but not draining them. Upon him doing this, they would, instead of becoming a vampire, would become a ghoul-like creature. 
with improved regeneration and similar abilities of the vampire. But not the same. They can't turn into pets, but they are extremely strong, fast, and mostly and actually entirely subservient to Izuku. They have an overwhelming urge and desire to protect him at all costs. Now the third method, the most complicated and risky method, is him fully draining the victim and replacing their blood with his own blood. Now before I tell you what that does, I'll tell you a bit about Deku's quirk. With every thro with every ghoul, every half vampire, and every vampire, you could say, Deku's quirk grows stronger. His strength multiplies by, well, that person's. So if you were to turn someone like All Might into... Give me a moment. Okay, let me continue. If he were to... Fuck. Sorry, no one would let me stand still for more than two seconds. Okay. So, let me continue. If Deku were to turn someone like All Might, he would essentially, well, gain technically All Might's strength, and, well, the power boost on top of him becoming a vampire. Now, the half vampires, we shall call them. <clears throat> nah, they no, they are really just full-fledged vampires. I'm referring to the ghouls. The ghouls can still walk in the sunlight since they still have majority of their blood. Human blood. Now you can tell, well, Deku and his vampires, apart from their ghouls, because one does not have a shadow. So vampires themselves... Apologies, I had to change to the bathroom, so sorry if there's a bit of an echo effect. Uh, anyway, so yeah, you can tell Deku's ghouls apart from the vampires, because, well, they have, well, the ghouls have shadows and can walk around in the sun, unlike Izuku and, well, his vampires. Now, the primary difference between, I'll call them blooded vampires and regular ones, is that, well, since the, vam the blooded vampires have Izuku's blood coursing through their veins, it basically allows them to, well, spread the curse more efficiently, as you would say. Now, with the unblooded vampires, they have to fully drain someone in order to get them to turn, and they can't have ghouls of their own because they don't have blood, unlike the blooded vampires, which can make more blooded vampires and have ghouls. Now, how the power uh, levels work is, well, quite simple. Ghouls have an eighth of Izuku's power. Unblooded vampires have... I'll go with a sixth. And blooded vampires are on equivalent ground of Izuku when he turns them. So upon the mean to turn to their own power stats upon Izuku, making him, sh like, stronger than them by a long shot. Now this creates a system where Zuku is always at the top, but he still has, well, strong servants. Now vampires and ghouls are still capable of growing stronger on their own through training measures, and due to their vampiric regeneration, they can actually train a lot more effectively, you know, because of the whole vampire, because how muscles work, you know, you make micro tears in your muscles when you walk out, and those tears are healed over time, which increases the size of your muscles. There are two benefits to be, well, a vampire. You stay leaner as, uh, you stay a lot leaner than bodybuilders since, well, your body is just repairing the muscles, they aren't adding more since there's no need. 
so it's only so they just strengthen your muscles so you get stronger but you don't get all the bulk Azuka's not gonna look like all mine in 40 years he's still gonna be pretty skinny but like the kind of skinny that makes him look good <laughs> second benefit is well the fact that you already have super strength stacked on top of your regular strength. And on top of, you know, the physical training. So you you basically can punch a car. Uh, just like yeet cards around. Now Deku would be quite... Okay, now... I'm just gonna say the rest of things here. Uh... Like I said, I'm pulling th from multiple different vampires and t kinds of vampires. So, you know, the whole mind control shit of a vampire, I'm not going to keep in full. It's sort of like more persuading you to do things than actually full-on mind control. You know, that would be too busted on the what vampire whatever. <laughs> but, up. Uh, but on top of that, I'll add the ability to turn into smoke, the ability to turn into a swarm of bats, the ability to turn into a giant bat, and the ability to sprout vampire wings. I might include the laser eyes and ability to freeze anything you touch from Dio. I might. Tell me in the comments if I should. But I think it would be weird seeing Deku, who's supposed to be a regular old vampire, shooting lasers out of his eyeballs and turning people instantly into blocks of ice. Also, Deku would have a natural disdain of dogs because of the rivalry between werewolves and vampires. He ain't Dio. Like, he ain't Dio levels of hating doggery. He's not gonna take his siblings or best friend's dog and put it in a f incinerator <laughs> but he just naturally does not like dogs he ain't gonna be a dog person more of a bad person but hearing this Deku would be cool so yeah sorry Deku would be very excited at his quirk everyone would kind of just Stay away from him. Except for the girls. <laughs> it's like the dudes. And the girls with more than... Like, the girls that don't like vampires would just stay away. Including Bakugo. Bakugo would just be like, nope. And dip. But all the girls that, like, watched Twilight and m read My Chemical Romance or stuff like that would just be within, always within one mile of Deku. You know, because of the whole vampires being romantic thing, and he appears to be aspects of every vampire. So, he would be pretty popular with the ladies. Now, Deku would get a relatively stable supply of blood from the local blood banks. Purchasing certain amounts so he can, well, stay alive, and, well, another little thing about his quirk, sunscreen. Yes, that works. Sunscreen, sunscreen can make his oh, sunlight allergy thing go from turning him to charcoal to just being hot. Just being very hot. Oh, it's a recording, but shit. But, yeah. Anyway. So, just saying this now, Deku's dad would have a bat-based quirk, and his mother would have a blood-based quirk. So, yeah. One, t one day, eh? This is around about the start of the anime. He would end up at a blood bank, and actually meet a... A girl with blonde hair trying to purchase some blood. 
Now, I'm just going to say, like, this is before she went ahead and dipped on her parents, if you know who this is. It's Toker. What other blondie would be at a blood bank? She looks like she just got out of school, still wearing a uniform, and just wanting to purchase some blood. But the stop, but yeah, it would be a bit of a process. But he would notice the fact that she. Well, why would you need to buy blood if you didn't have a blood related quirk? He would think to himself before seeing her walk off with her blood and then bite on it and drink some of it. Quite visibly quite happy. So he decided, she has a blood-based quirk, I have a vampirism quirk, so might as well. He would walk up to her and say hello, scaring the shit out of her, like, do you give me a moment? Fuck. But, yeah, she would try and hide the fact that she was drinking blood, but Deku would just take out a blood bag, use his teeth to pop it, and then drink a bit. So, do you have some kind of blood-based quirk, or... Uh, 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 if I drink people's blood, I can turn into them. Oh, okay. Is... So you can drink blood? Yeah, it's actually really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very nice. What about you? Oh, uh... My quirk basically makes me a vampire. I have to drink blood to stay alive. Thank goodness for the invention of sunscreen, am I right? <laughs> He would say nudging her with his arm. And after this, they would quickly become friends. You know, very quickly they would end up becoming pretty good friends. And, and after about a few months, you know, Toga would invite him to go to her house. Where her jackass parents were. Izuku would say yes, and, well, um, the night of Deku's arrival, no, a bit before that, Togo would be, you know, talking to her parents. Oh, oh, is this boy a good influence? I hope he is, considering your nasty habits. Uh, also, what, what, what might your friend like to eat? Uh, medium rare steak is about the only thing he can really eat since his quirk is a thing because of his quirk. Oh, would uh, he happen to have a dog quirk of some kind? No, he really, really doesn't like dogs. Flashback to when Deku was quite literally growling at a dog that was also growling at him, about to get into a cat fight with it. Well, a stray dog that, well, instinctively just sort of came at him. Dogs don't like him, he doesn't like them. It's that kind of thing. Snap back to current reality, and Toko would just say, uh, Oh, and... Uh, he also has difficulty with the sun because of his quirk. You know how those quirks are? The ones that make your skin burn in the sun? Or the ones that, you know, kind of make it so that you feel super woozy and drunk in the sun? Yeah, uh, he has difficulty with it, so can you come at night? Uh, of course, dearie. Of course, Toga. Uh, I honestly hope he's a good influence, and I would love to meet him. Her mother would say, his her father being passed out on the couch drunk. The night of the day, 
the night of the time Deku would arrive, would go quite swimmingly. He would walk up to their house. They would invite him in. They would invite him in. He would quickly step in and, well, sit down for dinner. As they would begin to eat, Toga's parents would then ask, So, uh, what's your quirk? I heard it makes you, it quite difficult for you to eat normal foods, and you don't really go into the sun that often, so tell me. Toga's mother would say, Uh, you know vampires? Yeah, I'm basically a vampire. Uh, uh, you know, different aspects of my quirk have been found in different iterations of vampires. The ability to spread wings, turn into a full-on giant bat, a swarm of bats, turn to dust, or turn into a cloud of smoke, and then Deku would explain to them about how his thrall system works, technically his servant system. With every word uttered by Deku, Toga's parents would get more and more disgusted. Vile creature of the night would be one popular word floating in their heads. When Deku is finished explaining how his quirk works and why he can't go out in the sun, Toka's mother is just so disgusted that she picks up a nearby cane and tries to whack Deku in the head with it, stating that he's a bad influence and just monster. Deku would grab the cane before it hit him and said, hey, I really hate people. Don't you agree, Himiko? Yeah, I do too. She would say, picking up a knife. Especially when they attack people, or treat them badly based off of their quirks. He would say getting more, more intimidating. Well, this is technically self-defense, so I can do this and still stay in the law. He would say his body quickly breaking apart into a swarm of bats. Busy swarming Toga's mother and biting her. He would reform behind her and say, You know, how they used to deal with vampires is that they would strip them down and put a special saw type thing around their necks and bury them, but not before burning them. Quite inhumane, but it was supposed to keep them from rising again, because if they were to do so, they would get decapitated. Another neat little thing about my quirk is that, well, you won't become a vampire if I decapitate you, and then suck all your blood away. It's really a quite nice loophole. You would say before dragging Toga's mother into a dark corridor, and then screams could be heard of Toga's mother. Toga's father would fall back, panicked, but Toga would be standing over him with the dinner knife. Oh, I'm gonna relish in this, she would say before he would cut. Well, before she would stab into him and screams could be heard. I don't want to describe what they do to them, because it's quite horrific. I also currently am not in the mood to describe especially gory things. So, yeah, that happens. And well, within, give me a moment, within a few weeks they would get themselves sort of institutionalized. Toga would have become Deku's first fellow vampire, you could say. She would happen to be a blooded vampire, allowing her to do just about whatever she pleases 
with well the sudden boost in strength she got and well they would have institutionalized themselves Deku creating a few zombies well ghouls out of local street thugs and well a few non-blooded vampires on well people that were more willing to join but still have yet to earn Deku's trust he would be still quite small in his army, but it would be growing. Day by day, each new vampire, a new vampire, of uh, la, la, la new vampires would be born from the feeding of the non-blooded, and well, Toga just going around like the serial killer she is. Well, Nintendo. Intern.gif has really been doing a lot of chess-related content lately. Anyway, yes. So they would end up making a relatively well-known little institution known as the Vampire's Creed. One that no one really knows about since most members before being caught, would typically end their own lives through a wooden stake to the heart. Also, fun fact, Deku's quirk makes it, makes it so that his regeneration increases with the more blood he consumes. Deku would be living this double life as regular school student Azuka Midoriya, and, well, basically a mini version of Dracula at night. Stormtrooper dog. Anyway, yeah. So, yes. Deku would be, quite frankly, a, a relatively scary villain because, well, he has immense strength, speed, durability, and regeneration. But he doesn't view himself as a villain, more of a hero. The hero that no one really wants, but the hero they need. Considering the fact that he only goes after thugs, and, well, just in general, bad people. Like, sort of, someone who Stain would not mind getting along with, we would s I could say. Also, you know, Stain would end up becoming... I don't want to spoil so, a few more months would pass, and Deku would join UA. He would quite easily dispatch most robots, save Eurarica once again because of the immense strength and speed, and he would end up attending Class 1A due to his highly unique quirk. This is a very cool looking picture, I'm just saying this now, it's a very neat one. Like, I like this bit. So, with each coming day, Daku would get better and better at using his quirk. He would ace the ball through, side to side jumping, so on and so forth, doing about as well as he did in, well, the anime, due to the vampiric super strength. And around about the U.S. No, heroes versus villains. Quite easy. He's paired up with Eurorica, but it's her job to scrap. To distract Bakugo, while Steku just turns into a swarm of bats and flies upwards, breaking the window. No, yeah, breaking the window upon entry. Once again, he has been permitted entrance into the fake building. You know, the building has to have residence. And also, like, the building they're using is an apartment building, and he can really only... It only his quirk only takes effect if someone's living there. But since it's a fake one, he can just enter freely. And he would break through the window before turning into a swarm of dust, scaring the shit out of Ida. Like, 
Is he dead? Is he alive? What's going on? Why is the smoke circling me? Before our two hands would reach out and slam Ida into the wall, knocking him out. Before Deku would, well, uh, touch the ball and the arm and win the Yorsh J. Anyway, once that is all set and done, Deku and Toga would be out once more a night as two bats flying across the sky. You know, one bat, two bat. They, they would encounter, well, a roast chicken nugget of a man burning someone alive. Togo would laugh at how he looks, alerting him. He would rapidly look behind himself, noticing two bats hanging on a pole, one of them a smaller one would be laughing its ass off. <laughs> well, the bat that would be laughing would be a, you know, blonde kind of color, the same as Toga's hair, whilst the one, the larger one, would be green, and it would smack her, the smaller one on the back of the head. Darby would be very confused before putting two and two together. Oh, you little shits! You laughing at me? Daku would turn into a puff of smoke and say, Apologies, sir. Uh, my friend here would happen to... Would happen to not have any manners. Now would you, Toka? The other bat would turn into a puff of smoke and say, and return to the form of a girl before saying, Come on, Zuzu, you know I... <laughs> you know I can't help myself when someone looks that dumb. Oh my goodness. Darby would say, Wait, 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 wait. Are you two members of the Vampire's Creed? Deku would nod. Azuka Midoriya, at your service. He would say, waving his cape in a dramatic show, causing Toga to laugh even more. <laughs> Zuzu, you really don't need to be this dramatic. You know, a little curtsy. <laughs> Toga would now be on the floor laughing her ass off. Darby would say, Oh my goodness, I'm your biggest fans. Can I join? Can I join? Please, 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 please. Uh, okay. You have to prove your conviction first. Uh, I'll start you off as a ghoul. How does that sound? And you can work your way up. Fun fact about Deku's quirk. He's actually able to, well, basically... He promote his ghouls to vampires of the unblooded variety, and then pr promote those unblooded vampires to va to blooded vampires, m making them significantly stronger in the process. So yeah, Deku basically can promote those good, those especially good minions. So Deku would do as such, and Darby would be ecstatic. He would be like, I won't let you down, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. He would then notice that his burn scars, well, the areas with the staples, would begin to close as the staples would be shot out, but the skin wouldn't fall off or anything. It would just seal back up and begin to heal slowly, but it would begin to heal. He would begin, he would get even more excited, like, Holy shit! Oh my goodness, I'm t Thank you, thank you! Uh, 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 now I need to know, can I do anything to speed this up? Deku would say, uh, yeah, you can just drink a lot more blood and the healing will speed up. It usually speeds up to the amount of drug you have. No, not drug, blood you have in you. So, yeah, just try and... 
Drink as much blood as you can to stay nice, healthy, strong. Also, if you want to eat anything, make sure it's medium rare and bloody. You know, the vampire digestive system really doesn't go well with non-blood-based uh, foods. So make sure it's either raw or medium rare. Uh, once you make it up to, well, a regular vampire... Give me a moment. Deku... Okay. Uh, Deku would be for Darby the coordinates to, well, their base camps and schools always come out as 100% loyal to their master, which typically and always is Izuku. Due to the main fact that he is the master of basically every vampire he creates, which means the plotted vampires that are, well, create the blood of vampires that create their own ghouls, the ghouls will still be more loyal to Izuku than to them. And, well, the non-blooded and the blooded vampires are still, ex still always come out as loyal to Izuku. So when he makes people vampires, he really doesn't have to worry about their loyalty. And, well, he flies off with Toga, who's still laughing. Anyway, I am ending this off here. Goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience, and bye bye